Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of the Baseball Talk Radio Show. My name is Rich Baxter, and doing a solo show for this weekend, Gary Mack is feeling under the weather, and Gary, I hope you feel better out there after getting that booster shot and um, been down and out a little bit over there. And uh, sending my best regards to you and your family. I hope everybody's feeling better real soon. All right, well, that being said, let's get over to some baseball news this week. A lot to talk about, some signings. The Mets really went in big so far. Uh, Corey Kluber agreeing to a one-year deal with the Tampa Bay Rays, according to a source. A lot of... This day's uh, reporting is going to be according to a source. So, doing the show on Sunday, November 28th. And as you can see there, Corey Kluber, a one-year deal with the Rays. And another closer, speaking of closers this weekend, Mr. Naris from the Phillies. A long-time closer, according to a report also heading out of Philadelphia, going to the Astros. And um, I read over on ESPN.com, it's a two-year deal worth $17 million is what the Athletic is reporting. Um, the Phillies did want to re-sign Naris, but um, not at that kind of money. Naris has been pretty good. Uh, at times, but he's been pretty bad at times, too. I mean, I hope the Astros did the right thing by bringing him on, but um, I'm kind of glad to see that era go from the Phillies. Uh, I don't think he's going to be a closer with the Astros. Is he going to be a good setup guy? Yeah, maybe. You know, and that's always been the question of Naris is – which Naris are you going to get? Um, and he's certainly done a pretty good job for the Phillies over the years, but he also blew four saves and six opportunities last year and posted a 9.0 ERA from June 10th to the 26th. He's one of the reasons that the Phillies didn't make the playoffs in 2021. So, uh, you know, he's going to get paid, though. He's going to go move over to the Astros and um, and pick up a big paycheck. So good for him. Hector Naris heading over apparently to the Houston Astros. And as I said at the start of the show, uh, the Mets made a big splash this week. Um, after hiring their GM, he said they were going to go after some big free agents, and they certainly have it. Landing Starling Marte. And uh, a couple other players. Uh, Marte's the, the big signing so far. He got a four-year, $78 million contract out of the Mets. And a couple other guys picked up some cash, too. Uh, Lesser-known names. Uh, Marte, who's 33, has been a Mets target uh, for a long time, apparently. So um, the owner of the Mets, Steve Cohn, Cohen, uh, opening his wallet for some big free agents, and uh, they needed that. They needed a couple good news stories to happen to the Mets this week after uh, losing one of their better pitchers, and of course the Phillies got a good pitcher as well, <laughs> and uh, Stephen Matz also departing the team. Uh, in the past week for St. Louis, which Steve Cohen, Cohen also um, got on Twitter and was um, remanding and remarking about the agent of Stephen Matz. Didn't give the Mets a chance to counter, apparently. And, you know, the Mets had their chance, but, uh, you know, along came a team. They're offering a contract. They want an answer. What does uh, Steve Cohen want? Uh, you know, come back, try to haggle again for another contract offer, uh, reveal their hand that they got X amount from St. Louis. No, I think 
that was kind of a whiny thing to do from Steve Cohen, uh, being the kind of guy he is with the um, resources and uh, cash that he has on hand. Uh, you would think he would be a little more business savvy and not make those uh, silly comments that he did. Well, anyway, uh, we have uh, some other news, of course. Uh, one of the biggest pitchers on the free open market this year is uh, Mad Max, and he's going to probably come up with a choice by Tuesday, they say. Um, according to MLB Network Insider, John Heyman is reporting that Scherzer is expected to sign with the team before December 1st, and that's only on Wednesday. So uh, this coming Wednesday, we may know where Max Scherzer is going and uh, seems to be favoring the West Coast. You know, they have three, well, two good teams out of the three, the Dodgers and the Giants, the Angels also, a uh, an outside chance but um the Mets are also in an uh chance to acquire uh Scherzer as well and that would give him a chance to get back into the NL East place that he was with the Washington Nationals for a short time and uh wouldn't that be something if the Mets landed him so uh they're trying to promote something there and at City Field, a new era, so to speak, for the Mets. And um, they've already reached some good deals with some players. So maybe that'll lure Max Scherzer to go over there and, um, and join the Mets. Pitchers love to join a team that they think are going to win, like Max Scherzer. I remember years ago with the Phillies, it was open season for these guys to, to join the team. We had like four aces on the team at one time. Um, Halliday, Hamels, uh, <laughs> you name it. We had four of the top pitchers going uh, for a short time. It didn't win them a World Series championship, though, interestingly enough. Um, they just couldn't win at all. Uh, but we had a great rotation that year in Philadelphia. But uh, it became a, a spot that people wanted to to stop in at after the Phillies won the World Series in 2008. Uh, the next several years, you know, was, there was a buzz around that team. And these veteran pitchers wanted to associate themselves with that buzz and, and come on in and try to get some of the the accolades that the uh, 2008 team won. So um, that's how it goes with uh, starting pitching sometimes. They want to jump on the bandwagon. I'll jump over to uh, some of the ESPN.com coverage. They are also talking about the Rays reporting, reportedly adding the veteran Kluber to the rotation. So it's not official yet. It has not been announced. The Red Sox agreed to a one-year term with Michael Waka, uh, $7 million. And um, that's a pretty good deal for Waka. Uh, and Boston picks up a nice veteran pitcher who uh, didn't do so well with Tampa last year. He was 3-5 and five with a 5.05 ERA. But, um, you know, he's 63 and 48 overall, lifetime with a 414 ERA. And that's over nine major league seasons. So, um, Michael Waka joining the Red Sox in 2022 for the start of the season. Pittsburgh Pirates uh, reportedly bringing back Yoshi Tasagugo. And I hope I. <laughs> said that name right. Uh, One-year deal, four million dollars. Haven't heard too much on the uh, the posting player that we had talked about last week on the podcast. Me and Gary uh, didn't see where he actually landed anywhere, and uh, that'll be interesting to see 
what happens with him. Well, this coming week as well, we'll know about the collective bargaining agreement. December 1st is also the day that the agreement expires at 11.59 p.m. Eastern Time. December 1st, we're going to find out if baseball is indeed in strike mode. Um, kind of hard to believe that they would even consider this, but uh, apparently um, that's a good possibility uh, for Wednesday, this upcoming Wednesday. So I'm sure we'll be talking about that uh, next week on the program, and I hope Gary is back, as I said, uh, at the start of the show. All right, well, Chris Bryant is still available. Will he be traveling anywhere uh, anytime soon? ESPN Plus has a story on that. Will he be staying with the Giants, or where will he be going? So uh, there's some notable free agents still left out there. Uh, a lot of big names still looking for a home, some new contracts, some big deals. And uh, my, my uh, analysis of this is we may be seeing some of those signings this coming week because the, these guys want to get in with a the team. Uh, they want to know where they're going to be for 2022. Uh, Corey Kluber making that signing. Uh, Two-time Cy Young a winner. There, uh, Corey Kluber and uh, Hector Neris, the other big name. Two-year, $17 million deal. That's a huge deal for Neris. I don't think he's that great of a pitcher, but the, this day and age, not a great – if you're not a great pitcher, you're going to get eight and a half million dollars. I remember the Phillies had several duds over the years that they were paying $8.5 million or more. And they carried those pitchers. Um, and uh, anymore, it's just it's a lot of money to me and you, but it's not a lot of money for a guy that can throw a baseball uh, with any regularity. So um, Hector Neris catching, cashing in on his Phillies um, experience there, apparently, um, as it was just reported uh as a possibility. So again, a couple of these trades I was and signings I was just talking about are not official yet. So if it happens to be next week that it changes, then you know that was just uh, you know premature announcement, that sort of thing. So um, a lot of movement though happening. That's a good thing in baseball. Uh, jumping over to fan graphs here. One of my uh, favorite sites, they start to do their 2022 predictions um, and projections here. Let's take a look at, uh, at one of them here. Um, and it looks like it's a little too soon for that. That one, the zips, they're just starting to get this ready for 2022. And they also have a nice podcast uh, over here, a couple of them, that you can listen to. And you can stop by to our website, my website that I do. It's called BaseballTalkRadio.com. And uh, it's got about 30-some-odd podcasts that you can check out for Baseball Talk. There's a Fangraphs Audio podcast if you're watching the uh, YouTube version of the show right here and um, what you do is just click on it there's a little ad for uh, Gordon Ramsay if you want to see more about that you would open that ad but if not you just hit close and right over here you listen to the latest couple shows and more episodes of course of Fangraphs and go back to the main page you're going to see our show here baseball talk radio show Listed with Gary and I here. That's our our pictures here. Click on that. The same thing. You're going to see our shows pop up. You can listen to them anytime. And during the baseball season, um, I even have a 24-hour a day, seven-day-a-week feed. 
that you can listen to various shows, and that gets a lot of listens worldwide, not even just here in the U.S. Uh, overseas, of course, they don't have the luxury of tuning in to a lot of the uh, shows that we have, um, and I have them playing on a player on this website. So uh, my Phillies Talk podcast is here as well. You can listen to that all the time. And Gary has some Mets musings. Gary's podcast right here with the Mets musings offering here, right here on BaseballTalkRadio.com and BaseballPodcast.net. They're the home for great baseball talk shows. Um, listen all you can. We got Cleveland on there. With, they're the Guardians now. Uh, no longer the Indians. Wow, what a what a big change for that franchise. Decades and decades they were the Indians, and that was uh, fine. But uh, all of a sudden here in 2021, it seems like everything has gone haywire. Uh, everybody's offended. It's just a, 2021 is a weird year, let me tell you, for, for changes uh, with what these people, certain people are promoting uh, disgusted with uh, Civil War figures, you know, uh, from 150 years ago, 200 years ago. What do they have a bearing on today? You going out <laughs> and earning a living, putting food on your table, but yet that bothers some people. I mean, where? <laughs> and this is, again, off topic, and Gary and I sometimes uh, will stray off topic. But uh, where do these people come from? I, I, I don't know. I really don't. But um, I find it interesting that in 2021, the whole can of worms sort of um, exploded, so to speak. And uh, you get all these uh, special interest group uh, people all up in arms over nothing. I guarantee you, you're wasting your time um, talking about uh, statues and things like that. Go out and do something with your life. Go out and <laughs> make a buck. Um, do something. But uh, crying about 150 years ago isn't going to cut it, um, in my opinion. Uh, baseball fans uh, don't even do that, you know, about the way the game used to be played and certain things like that. But all of a sudden in 2021, it's got to be, everything's got to be right, aligned like the planets or something. All right, well, that's enough of my soapbox uh, for you here on a Sunday. Uh, November 28th is when I'm doing the show. And uh, again, Gary will be back hopefully next week if he's feeling better. And uh, I will, of course, uh, bring up some of the stats before I close out the show. I always do that for our listeners and the watchers here on YouTube. And by the way, if you uh, watch us on YouTube, please hit the subscribe button. We need some more subscribers like you guys out there um, checking it out. If you like it or if you don't like it, <laughs> hit subscribe. Um, and it's going to help us out tremendously with the show here. Uh, let's look at some of the numbers. Look at these graphs, will you? on our podcast here. We went up big time in the last couple weeks uh, here in the off season, October, November here, uh, cresting on a lot of listens here. Some of our top episodes are listed here, as you see the bar graph there. And um, what I like to talk about a lot of the time is our listeners, and that's you folks out there that are listening. 72% listen via Apple Podcasts, so we appreciate that, and do hit the subscribe button. If you got a spare minute, I know everybody bugs you for uh, reviews these days, but if you have a spare minute and you like our show, please write us a nice review on iTunes. It'll help other people find our show. Um, moving up to second place here, Amazon Alexa. We have a lot of uh, smart um, device listeners now. Google Podcasts, 3%. Overcast, 2%. And Other is a whole 17%. 89% of you are from the U.S. 
7% over in Great Britain. And hello, England. Uh, lovely country over there. And we have some listeners all over the globe as well, as you can see in the listing there. Uh, it's nice to have a, a good representation of listeners. And we do fairly well on that scale as well. We have a lot, large majority of um, 45 to 59s and 35 to 44 years old. That's very cool. And right on down the line, 21 to 27 and 28 to 34 year olds. Uh, majority of our listeners, the guys out there, thank you guys, 82%. And the ladies, we love you out there, 18% as well. All right, well, that's about all I can come up with with new news this week in the podcast here for the Baseball Talk Radio Show. Again, uh, Gary, hopefully on the mend, going to be back next week talking some, uh, hopefully we have baseball news to talk about and it's not locked out and the uh, players aren't on strike, so, so to speak. So you guys make it a great Cyber Monday out there and have a great week and I'll talk to you again coming up real soon here on the Baseball Talk Radio Show. Thanks everyone for tuning in and have a great week.